Welcome to the best teaser of all time. We've got sleepers and breakouts on today's show. We put a little fear in Jason's heart and a whole lot more. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Short and sweet today. More concise. I don't know why. Just trying to tidy some things up. Just going for efficiency. I just know it'll be a. It's a long show. It's going to be a big show today, and every second counts, Mike. <laughs> uh, welcome in, one and all, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. Fun show today. We have breakout and sleeper picks on the show. Oh baby, which I find to be kind of a when you look at breakouts and sleepers in particular with the way the media cycle is now and social media and podcasts and like no one really hides right yes does that yeah i mean uh you know a decade ago sleepers were people you hadn't heard of right now with the news cycle and the fantasy frenzy and i mean everyone listening to this show right now is doing it in the off season you have heard some of these players, but it's really more a matter of, you know, finding the the highest probability of the players that you've heard um, to hit or, or or the highest ceiling. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just like like you were saying, you know, it's hard to hide anymore. But we want to bring names to light that we think have a tremendous amount of upside when it comes to being a breakout. Or, and as a sleeper, the names should not sound obvious. They should have questions. There should be a path, a ribbon that you can tug on and find your way through, but it, it it shouldn't be somebody that is clear and obvious. It should be somebody that a couple things have to go their way. Yeah, some dreams. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You see what I did there? Sure. Jason Jason I stole, missed that one. We were we're talking about sleepers. Yeah. And then ah, oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. <laughs> I'm in. I like it. Uh, Last year, this show was actually our live show in Detroit where Mike had mentioned Miles Sanders. Oh, who well, well, well. Definitely outperformed his average draft position. So credit to you, Mr. Wright. Thank you. Uh, and this is all that was also the episode where Jason the Panda Bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> took the, off it was his more of a lion shirt, bear. Took off his shirt and had <laughs> like. Man, bear pig. Uh, a lion's jersey. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Did you have a mug and everything? Yeah, oh, had, I had a, a hat. hat oh. and I, I was lion's out. That was a good time. couple of reminders at the top before we jump in. Uh, we haven't mentioned it in a while, but if you're interested in supporting the show, becoming a part of our community, you can go to jointhefoot.com. The Foot Clan uh, is mighty and strong, and we have a Discord community um, and a ton of perks for you over there, including an extra episode of the show every single week. Uh, we have access to Foot Clan leagues, so you can find people to either fill in a spot in maybe one of your leagues where you need a good player, or the opposite. You can go fill in a spot for somebody else in a league and join together. And um, and all the all the tools on the website as well are basically for the in season. They're all unlocked. Um, you know when you join the Foot Clan, so everything from you know the Stream Finder, the weekly snapshot tool, or even on player profile pages. Um, you know, seeing the the beautifully colored rundown of fantasy finishes, all those things, they're all included in that. So that's jointhefoot.com, and obviously the UDK is out now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Our quick question. No, but we have one more. Okay. Andy. Oh, that's true. That's because true. The, we need like a. No, I, well, I don't know where you were going to go. I was going to go with the, uh, the, uh, the new episode of the Dynasty podcast hit yesterday. Yeah. And oh, someone, yeah, made a, news. someone made a debut appearance. On, what? on the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but I've been on the show. I've been on the show. And Jason's been on the show. So somebody else. It's Brooks. Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> um, yeah, that came out yesterday. 
Yes. So uh, it was a lot of fun is what I'm hearing from whomever was on the show. <laughs> All right. Quick question from Brandon in Indianapolis. When discussing players like Damian Pierce or James Robinson, um, or I'll add Philip Lindsay, um, you guys often bring up their team's lack of draft capital investment in the player and how it can be a concern about the player's long-term value. That is true. We bring that up because teams aren't committed financially to these players. And so even a player who has a rookie season like Philip Lindsay over a thousand yards, you can't pencil them in as a starter for multiple years because, uh, you know, if they struggle in the short term, it's very easy for the team to make an adjustment. They don't feel committed. Uh, his question, though, is does that philosophy only apply to running backs or could someone like Brock Purdy, who was the last pick of the NFL draft last year, fall into that grouping and fear as well? So it applies for sure to every single position. Every single position it applies to. Now, there are outliers to that. Austin Eckler was an undrafted free agent. When a dude, it, took a, it, it took way longer than it should have, though. Like, when you were watching the Chargers and Melvin Gordon, and then they're like, Austin Eckler looks way better than Melvin Gordon. Why, like, get this kid on the field? And that and, was when Gordon was great. Yeah, and they just, but Gordon kept getting on the field because he was a first-round pick. I was going to sneeze. <laughs> so thank you for the pause there, gentlemen. Uh, but the sneeze has left me. But it, it applies. Oh, my God. I thought you were pausing for dramatic effect. Oh, yeah. No, it was just it was I was going to sneeze. It was because you were about to sneeze? I started to get really nervous. Yeah, the, I thought you had broken down. I thought it was another <laughs> leg injury while you're sitting. The uh, it, it applies to everyone. So Brock Purdy, what he did is he came out and went undefeated as a starter uh, was taking a team. Well, to, to, sure, I know the 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 record and the teams and all that. No, he's no, going to no. point out the playoff game. He that lost he was the injured. playoff game. Yeah. Oh come on, Mike. <laughs> come on. Hey, look, facts so, are facts, man. <laughs> so you know when when a player really does something um, very special and very public. Yes, they can. Oh, they can overcome that. But it applies to every position. Sam Howell. Right, if Sam Howell, who was, you know, last year he was rumored to be a uh, on the first round bubble. Will he? Will he drop to the second? Will someone spend a first rounder on him? He fell to the fifth. If Sam Howell struggles this year, and, and he will, the the you know the <laughs> when, rug is when he struggles, the rug is going to be pulled out from underneath him. Whereas on the flip side, when when first round picks, it's not just financial investment. It's uh, political investment, public perception. Yeah, investment. general manager pride and coaching pride and, and fans expectations. And we and we know this as fantasy players. We put people into our lineup that we spent a high fantasy draft pick on, and we might keep them there too long out of sheer stubbornness. Yeah, one hundred percent. So it, it does apply to all uh, all positions. If you look at um, wide receivers, uh, tight ends, it, it, you know any position. The the rope, the leash is longer for mistakes to be made. And that's really what it's about. It's not about how good they play. Philip Lindsay was great. It's about a, an injury comes along. Well, if an injury comes along to Damian Pierce, the team is not committed to him the same way that if an injury comes along to Brees Hall. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it will apply. And honestly, I don't know if Brock Purdy has done enough to truly be – um, impervious to that. If well, he comes out and struggles with the injury and has a bad season and um, you know gets replaced, or maybe the injury lingers and and he needs to have a cleanup, and it, whoever comes in, Darnold or Trey Lance, that's fair. Uh, there's no guarantee that he gets a chance again. Yeah, and and the truth is, is we talk about it a lot. And we brought up a bunch of running back names because that happens quite a bit. You know, the fourth, fifth rounder six rounder they do have breakout seasons or have opportunities it doesn't happen at quarterback it really doesn't and the ones that have are the stories you tell of the six round tom brady brock purdy started five games that is more games than all seventh round rookie quarterbacks over the last decade have started combined so in the last decade seventh round quarterbacks have played four total games so it is a little bit of an outlier and a uh, a, a non-traditional thing to have happened where the team is this confident in a last pick of the draft. But your point about the injury, like especially with a team like San Francisco that has won so many games with different quarterbacks, 
if it if the injury caused Purdy to be sat down again and then they go on a six game winning streak with Sam Darnold, there will be no guarantee that he gets that job back. And I say Sam Darnold because today there was a news report saying that he is the front runner for the number two job and Trey Lance would be the third. Oof. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> Has there I, ever been? I, I believe as Mike said, I, and it's the inverse. It's like the last pick in the draft, Brock Purdy is your starter, and and you traded the world to go up to what three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a it is a does if Trey Lance like uh, doesn't start a game this year for the Forty ers it's just it's a massive. Isn't disaster. it net neutral though because of Purdy? It's, 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 it, they, you they can have... choose to look at it like that if you want, or you can realize you traded. Two future first to move up to the third. It feels unfair. And, and you could have drafted like a in a real impact player at yeah. number three. What's crazy is that as as outlier as Brock Purdy is, that's how outlier the Trey Lance situation is too. We're coming into at least in terms of total starting yeah, opportunities because he hasn't played his way out of it. You know, we, right. we haven't really we haven't seen him fail behind the scenes. It seems he has. Yeah, that he if must. You're gonna, have. He if you're going to put Sam Darnold up ahead of him at this point, but yeah, Trey Lance was the number three pick. I mean, that was a Jamar Chase went five in that draft. Yeah, Jalen Waddle went six. So uh, you know, Sertain at nine. Like you, you could look at it the appropriate way, which yes, is they that, blew, that, they blew, <laughs> they blew it. Yes, the, but they did the, get lucky with Purdy. If if you look at it the other way of like, well, if we drafted Purdy there and he's, he's like, that's just you're just lying to yourself. You the, they they messed up, and but thankfully for uh, you know the, all of the people in charge of the Forty ers is they've been great for years and they like they they were still very good last year. So it, it like if a if a team that has no success makes that move, everybody who was in charge no longer has a job. The question on the Dynasty podcast yesterday that was brought up to the special guest. Yes. Uh, uh, around Brock Purdy was like, do you care if he's the starter when the season begins? And, you know, and how does that impact all the other players? And my answer is pretty much no, because they're a machine. I mean, the 49ers are, I mean, that guy's answer was no, <laughs> because he, he, they're just a machine that works and you just, you just put another amalgamate yeah. quarterback in. Which is, it, it's I mean, absurd. God save us all if they have a great quarterback. I that, mean, like a true top 15 that's quarterback. That's what they were trying to do. Because they did a lot with Jimmy G and Brock Purdy. And, yep. Um, all right. Well, let's, uh, it, let's move on. I don't think we have any big news. Monitoring the Tyreek Hill situation, he's been investigated for assault and battery at a marina in Miami Beach. So we will... We don't know a lot as to how that nope. could impact him, so not a lot to talk about. Um, Huge signing for the Rams, though. Yeah, Sony Michel arrives. He's back, baby. <laughs> oh man, uh, all that nice Cameron Acres talk, and now obviously that's done. Cameron yeah, so this is, is great. I mean, it, what it actually means is that clearly Zach Evans and Kyron Williams didn't show enough yet. To make them not want to go get Sony yeah. Michelle. Or I, mean, I don't know. You're just adding some depth. We'll see if Sony makes the team. Well, look, it can't be a good sign for those two guys, in my opinion, to add a, a, a free agent back. Yeah, if if those two guys are dominating and looking amazing, they're not going to be like, let's, let's add, add a, a fourth. Let's, let's add some depth. Maybe there, there's just there's not a whole bunch they could be dominating yet. Okay, um, and then the other bit of news, <laughs> which I mean, it's not really news, but the rumor mill is just continues to churn oh we, i don't even know what we're gonna I say i know what he's gonna say for dalvin cook oh <laughs> and dalvin cook has now retweeted multiple jets related oh. tweets on the interwebs let's, this is let's go live to Brees hall truth or jason moore let's jason go get moore. the spotlight over there yeah, if so we can jason, jason moore get uh, your reaction uh we have Brees hall coming off a sensational uh few games but tour up his knee pretty bad <laughs> and looked like he would be a three down running back. But if Dalvin Cook goes to the Jets, how are you going to feel about that? I'm going to feel uh, pretty. I'm going to say I'm going to feel fine <laughs> outwardly. And I'm going to be pretty upset inwardly. I, I will wait to see what the contract is. Hopefully it is one year or no guaranteed money. In it'll year be two. it'll be a two year it'll, contract because it'll be the Aaron Rodgers window. 
Yeah, and then and then I will be. Look, <laughs> it, it, at the end, <clears throat> Brees Hall today is a significantly better player than Dalvin Cook today, or I should say, in like four or five months. <laughs> but it's Dalvin Cook versus uh, Bam Knight, Michael Carter. Uh, who am I missing? Anybody from the Jets backfield? Uh, that might be th the names worth like, mentioning. I mean, like he jumps up to number two in the depth chart, and the, the, dude, dynasty, dynasty a running. Oh yeah, and they, and Abanda Kanda is there as well. I mean that's <laughs> that is trouble, trouble for three down work. Look, Dalvin wants to be a Jet. I don't know that the Jets want Dalvin to be a Jet. I don't know. In that scenario, are you referring to yourself <laughs> as the Jets? I am referring <laughs> to me as the Jets. Okay. I I don't believe the Jets want Dalvin okay. Cook there. Right. This, but this is like I agree with you in that case. Dynasty running backs, man. Other than guys like Bijan, when they get drafted in the top ten, is just they could <laughs> even guys the high level as Brees Hall. You still have to be freaked out that someone could come in and ruin everything. What was paid for Javante Williams before the injury last year in Dynasty Leagues? Like you're saying, I mean, what was the lot. cost? What was the cost to acquire the guarantee? Yeah, it is your day in the sun, Javante. Just, yeah, no. Well, if you want, I mean, we talked a lot about this on the Dynasty show yesterday. So if you want more, not not that specific Brees news, but just running back longevity in Dynasty. So. Um, other than just wanting to see Jason's reaction, oh, I don't man. think there's any other news we have. Do you have anything, Brooksy? No, sir. All right, let's move on. Breakouts. All right, early breakout picks. Uh, we've each selected a name we want to bring up and discuss and talk about, and um, we kind of define that breakout term as a player prime to become a fantasy superstar a game changer the potential to tear up you know we we build out the udk every year and we categorize players into tiers you know is, is we're looking at players that we think could be perennially in a higher tier after their performance this season um generally these are players that we've seen flash right but maybe they don't have the full season um of dominance under the belt so, uh, at the top, it's a player we've brought up. I know I do not stand alone in liking this player at, not all, at all, but it's Jahan Dotson, wide receiver for the Washington Commanders. I often talk about it. I think I took him in the mock draft on Tuesday uh, as discounted Terry McLaurin. You can get him two or three rounds behind Terry McLaurin, who, look, I, I'm not going to pretend Dotson's the one and McLaurin's the two. It's the inverse, but I think it's much more 1A, 1B, um, than it is one and two. Like Terry McLaurin does not represent the Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill type of number one to me. Uh, you saw Dotson have a nice start to the year. He had four touchdowns in the first four weeks of the season, went down with a hamstring, took him a while to get back, and then he was really, really effective when he returned. In fact, the final uh, five weeks of the season, he – paced the team in targets, so he led Washington seven a game. That was more, barely more than Terry McLaurin. Um, he led them in targets per route run, which is a stat I know, um, you know, tickles Mike's fancy. Yes, it does. Uh, almost 30%. That's from weeks 13 through 18. So that's, you, a, that's an outrageous number. Yeah, so you saw, you saw tremendous potential. Jason's talked about a consolidation of targets in this offense, but look, the pace over that last five weeks for Dotson – and McLaurin was essentially 120 targets, 70 plus receptions, 1,100 yards, and 10 touchdowns each. So uh, this was something that you saw in the field when you watched Washington play, and he was able to be out there. and And the one thing that we haven't brought up very much with Dotson, you know, you can make the statistical argument of, of you've seen these stretches, and you can also throw some cold water on it with the fact that the quarterback play is going to be inconsistent because it will. But we haven't really talked about the creative the creative opportunity that they're going to have with Eric Bieniemy, right? You're going from Scott Turner as an offensive coordinator to Eric Bieniemy, and generally speaking, talent means you'll be focused when 
or you'll be featured when a creative offensive coordinator comes into play. And so I think you're going to see Dotson schemed into a lot of creative opportunities with Eric Bien Um We already know how good his hands are. So I, I, I love it. I think Jahan Dotson is a player that we all have him ranked ahead of ADP. Um, I have him 20 spots ahead of ADP Ooh, in terms spicy. of a fantasy finish. So I think Jahan Dotson is a perfect second year breakout candidate. You know, second years for wide receivers yeah. is a huge opportunity. And I know I'm not going to get any real disagreement from no. you guys on that. No, I, I think both of us love Jahan Dotson. And, you know, you, you've obviously got issues with the quarterback play there. And so there's question marks there of whether Sam Howell can get it done. Whether there was issues just, last year, too. Right. And, and that, that that is, I think, the important takeaway is they're not going to get worse. They also aren't going to get better, but they don't need to. The player himself should get better going into year two. Uh, and hopefully the offense coordinator helps that quarterback, too, to just put sure. him in a position to succeed. So, Well, that's why I think the consolidation of targets will be there. Like, you, you've got – a newer, you know, pretty much a rookie in Sam Howell. He started one game uh, coming into play. Like you, and you have two dominant, great wide receivers. Like simplify the offense. You know what I mean? Look that way. Look that way. One of them gonna be open. Yeah, that's fair. And I'm. I know you're about to reveal your breakout. Oh yes, I am. But but we gotta wait a second. Oh no. And now, Jason, All right. you are permitted yes. to reveal a player that uh, you have been very high on all offseason. I have been high on him. I've drafted him uh, as if he is breaking out, and that is someone who is expected to break out, was drafted to be great. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Uh, I was going to say a Hall of Famer, um, and that's... Trevor Lawrence, quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, who had an abysmal rookie season, one of the worst touchdown rates we have ever seen, on a dumpster fire, <laughs> Urban Meyer. Oh, just that rhymes. Absolute it did. <laughs> calamity um, there in Jacksonville. An Urban his, Meyer dumpster fire. In his rookie year. Doug Peterson comes over. He, I, with healing ointment for the personalities of the Jaguars. He cast the demons out. I mean, that's what <laughs> he had some holy water, <laughs> and he's putting it on everybody. You look at the videos. Save um, us, even, Doug. Even this this off season, um, I know Andy. I showed you the video. I don't know if the listeners saw the uh, the video of the schedule release that the Jacksonville Jaguars did. It was just such a great work by their social media team. But it, it was funny. It, it was, was a play on the script in the NFL. And yeah, and on, on everything being scripted. It was. It, but but what I took away from it, like the owner, the coaches, the players, they were all involved in this video, and they looked like they are loving life together right now. Like that, this was a team that I think is gelling, and an offense that is going to be great. Trevor Lawrence looked so good towards the end of last year and go getting his team to the playoffs and having some come from behind wins and really showing something special. You say, well, how good was his sophomore season? He's the second sophomore quarterback ever to put up 4,000 passing yards, 25 passing touchdowns and add five rushing touchdowns uh, with fellow Clemson alum Deshaun Watson. Uh, he has a lot of big weeks too. Um, top number five, one, number five, number five, number he, four, number four. He had as many top five finishes as Justin Fields. He had more top five finishes than Justin Herbert last year as a as a sophomore, and, and he was he wasn't a world beater last year. He just showed enough that it was like, yes, that's the guy he's supposed to be. He's going to lead this team to division titles, to playoff wins, maybe someday to a Super Bowl, and he's a baby boy. He turned 23 in October. He's still he's younger than Will Levis, rookie quarterback coming in this year. From weeks 9 through 16. Banana Rama. Banana yeah, thank Rama. You. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh he is younger than Banana Rama. Is that on the website yet? Oh, I don't know, but it If Cameron's on the website, <laughs> Banana Rama better be on the website. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll get on that. Oh, let me make a note here Banana Rama. Um it's not. Uh, I'll fix it. I'll okay. fix it immediately. Um from weeks 9 through 16, 
The Jacksonville Jaguars offense just looked great. Fifth most passing yards, third in expected points per pass attempt, top 10 in almost every passing metric. And now they add Calvin Ridley to a really good core set of Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram. You've got Travis Etienne and Tank Bigsby who can catch the ball as well. This looks like a very powerful offense. It's the second year in the system with Doug Peterson. The second year in the system with Doug Peterson was when Carson Wentz was the MVP candidate before he got injured. And I, I, I mean, you expect Trevor Lawrence to be good, but you're saying, well, what is a breakout? A breakout to me is, I think he could throw for 40 touchdowns. I think he could throw for 4,500 yards and 40 touchdowns. And the nice thing is Trevor Lawrence can scramble. He's athletic. He will add 250, 300 yards. He had five rushing touchdowns last year. He, he has enough of the dual threat, kind of like Patrick Mahomes does, where you just think of him as a pocket passer. Then you look at the numbers and you go, he actually does quite a bit on the, on the ground. Trevor Lawrence can be the next guy to go up into the tier of what Herbert was, what Joe Burrow did last year, and and I expect it to happen this season. The, He's my breakout. The Titans' defense in that division gave up 29 passing touchdowns and over 4,600 yards through the air last year. You get to face a Houston defense that is certainly not intimidating. Um, you know, the Colts probably more middle of the pack, but the, that is one thing that's attractive, right? Like if you are if you are putting your chips in on Joe Burrow, who's going where? Where's oh, he going in draft? Joe Burrow's like third going, round. Yeah, like so. third, third round. Third, fourth, yeah. And so the chips in on Joe Burrow, I, don't get me wrong, Joe Burrow's going to be very good, but you also have much uh, a more difficult division and defenses to play, whereas I think we all we all agree that Jacksonville should win this division. It should. Do, do, any, do you have any other inklings to Tennessee maybe bouncing I mean, back or – I mean, that's the only one that actually yeah. comes to mind for me. Yeah, I, I, it's possible, I guess, for Tennessee if Ryan Tannehill can bounce back and Traylon Burks becomes the number one wide receiver that they traded uh, A.J. Brown, essentially like a one-for-one -one trade of A.J. Brown for, for Burks. If that works out, uh, I think there's a chance that, that Tennessee, and, and Vrabel has done very well with that team, but I mean, the the heavy favorites have to be the Jags. Yeah, I think they're at nine and a half wins right now, and that puts them as the betting favorites. So, okay, update here: Banana Rama has been added to I knew the that website was gonna happen. for Will Levis. <laughs> How did you did you go one word or did you use one, some high one word? Be one word, one word, all A's, obviously. Okay, Banana Rama. Yeah, <laughs> B A N A N A R A M A. Did you say that for us, Al? Banana Rama. There we go. All right, all right. Yeah. we did it. Um, Mike, uh, who's your breakout? All right. It's Chris Olave, baby, of the New Orleans Saints, second year wide receiver. It, it, he, this is, it's difficult here <laughs> when you have uh, a, a wide receiver where their ADP is already like the breakout is baked in. Because right now on Underdog, he is the wide receiver 12. On Sleeper, he is the wide receiver 13. And I have. No problem with either of those rankings. So I this am, is more like you'll pay the yes. breakout price. Yes, I will. I will pay market. I'm even like if people want to take him slightly above that, it honestly does not bother me. Uh, so looking back as rookies, you had Garrett Wilson. You had that breakout, the offensive player or offensive rookie of the year. You had Chris Olave, and Olave was 12 fantasy points fewer than Garrett Wilson. That's nothing, and Olave averaged more per game rookie points per game he is right next to Amari Cooper Amon Ross St. Brown AJ Brown Tyreek Hill CeeDee Lamb like that's where Chris Olave scored his rookie year since the year 2000 he became the 16th rookie Garrett Wilson also jumped in there so whatever 15 and 16 uh the 16th wide receiver uh, rookie wide receiver since 2000 to break a thousand yards he did it in 15 games he was just the eighth rookie in that time period to break a thousand yards with fewer than seventy-five receptions. So this is not just uh, just dink and dunk PPR guy. This is a, this is a guy no, who's the gets, opposite, really. Yeah, this is a guy who can get down the field and looking. At, speaking of targets per route run, rookie wide receiver since twenty fourteen, only Tyreek Hill had a higher targets per route run and yards per route run. Route run. Chris Olave is right there, and so then the question becomes. Can Derek Carr 
come in. Send in the car. Yeah, there it Send is. Send in the car. Can he come in and get it done? Because it, we talk about on this show, be careful with the new quarterback coming in and be like, this is the savior of the quarterback position for this team because more often than not, the answer is no. This is this this quarterback is not actually an upgrade. But looking back at what Derek Carr has done in his past four fantasy players, of course you have this past year, Devontae Adams, wide receiver three with nearly 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns. The year before that, Hunter Renfro, the accountant, was the wide receiver 11 with over 1,009 touchdowns. But the year before that, Darren Waller, nearly 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns. The year before that, Darren Waller, 1,145 yards and three touchdowns. And then, of course, you can go back even further, and you had uh, Derek Carr. You had the Crabtree, Amari Cooper years. Like When Derek Carr has had a special talent, that person gets featured, and that person is great for fantasy football. So while I don't think Derek Carr is necessarily the solution to take, to take the Saints over the top, he is a much better situation for any pass catcher uh, on the New Orleans Saints, and I think that Chris Olave is is about to be a rocket ship, and he will by next year he will be looked at as one of the elite players that's, for fantasy football. That's always interesting to me because you know, like our league of record, we have a franchise player, and then three players that go into a lottery. And right, you, you get two, and one goes back into the draft. And this past off season, I ended up keeping ending up with Olave and losing Garrett Wilson. Now I look at ADP, and those players are three picks or three spots apart um in terms of value is uh, is somebody like chris olave could he be in as high of a discussion as the way you view the jeffersons and the chases in dynasty leagues Ooh. and you know the next group up right, right. is is it all is olave in there with the garrett wilson he um, is he yeah he's category. right gory he's right there with garrett wilson for me i don't know if he can get to the 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 jamar chase jefferson because that's a that's a tier Jefferson and, and Chase are their own two player super tier for the wide receiver position. Super tier. But I think that the the next tier, Chris Olave will be viewed as that for redraft and for dynasty. It is super rare for a player that is brand new. Like we talk about rookie wide receivers, like Jefferson even started slow, right? Yep. Rookie wide receivers generally they ramp up over the course of the year. And unfortunately, due to the quarterback situation and the injuries, Olave almost inverse that. Like he mm -hmm. had 13 targets in week two, 13 targets in week three, 14 targets in week seven. And that's just any, he, and he missed the game in week six. So demanding that much of a target share out of the gate is a very good sign. And his fantasy finish at the end of the year probably categorizes him well below where we would be talking about him. Cause he would have been fighting Garrett Wilson for offensive rookie of the year. I think without such inconsistency at, at both quarterback and injury. Did you say week two and three? I believe I did. That's what I thought. James, those were James. Yeah, Winston those were James games. games. So we'll we'll see what Derek James do. does what he can to really help his wide receivers. Yeah, and, and defensive backs. And then on the Andy other team. Dalton does what he can to help the other team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that was weird. We'll never know. I think where Jameis Winston's health was in that situation, but now he's back, right? With the Saints? I th did he come back? I, I thought he was really comfortable there. I thought he did. He's, I, he's a backup again there, right? Let me just, yes, he's still on the team. Yep, there we go. Yeah, one-year extension. Okay, all right. Well, it's a lot better when you go from if Derek Carr gets hurt, you get Jameis, than if Jameis yeah. gets hurt, you get Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. <laughs> Sleepers. All right, we talked about it at the – top of the show but you know you can't hide anymore but these are players drafted later players you might not know a lot about or haven't heard their names brought up often uh, but are primed to have an opportunity Jason before you share your name Andy I'm curious do you think I like your pick <laughs> no <laughs> I love your pick Oh, really? And I knew that would surprise that's, you, so that's why you because I like his teammate a lot, but it's not mutually exclusive. This player is awesome. He's just super good at football. And 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 your point about it not being mutually exclusive bore itself out in the actual back half of last year. 
The name I'm going to bring up as my sleeper candidate today is Jalen Warren, running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And like you said, he is actually a good running back. In fact, he averaged 4.9 yards per attempt. You know, the criticism on Najee Harris thus far has been volume, not efficient, not getting. I think he's been below four both seasons. The offensive line struggles. Yes. And um, Warren, despite that line, 4.9 yards per attempt, same yards after contact per attempt numbers as Jonathan Taylor and Travis Etienne. We saw a part of last year where Harris was really struggling. And it seemed like, okay, it's Jalen Warren time, and then he got hurt. And so we didn't get to see it put on display very often. Um, he forced 29 missed tackles. That is the eighth highest elusive rating on PFF. And then literally this past week, the Athletic uh, came out and said, look, there's no way offensive coordinator Matt Canada can keep Jalen Warren off the field as much as he did last season. So Najee is definitively the starter in Pittsburgh. But the one thing that made Najee kind of absolutely dominant in his first season was a massive volume of receptions. From the time, which is not a small sample, from weeks 10 through 18, Warren's reception pace was better than Najee's reception pace. He actually caught 28 passes last year, and he averaged two more yards per catch than Najee Harris did and caught a higher percentage of his targets than Najee Harris did. And so some of the talk around Pittsburgh is getting him involved on third down. Now that would be an area we'd have to examine. Are you worried about Najee if he continues to lose out on third down because his reception pace over the last, from weeks 10 to 18, Najee's reception pace was 30. What was it in rookie year? 70 plus? Yeah, he caught a ton. So I guess the question is, is you know, one, if Najee struggles, Warren's going to have a bigger opportunity. Two, clear path to fantasy relevance if you're involved in the passing game. Highly efficient. Uh, not quite a full Pollard-Zeke situation, but I look at it somewhat similar. Th this situation, it, it, like, is comped, has happened. It's identical to me. It is the Melvin Gordon Austin Eckler situation because <laughs> Warren's oh, yeah. undrafted. Warren oh, is yeah. the undrafted free agent going into his sophomore year. After you saw flashes of brilliance as a rookie, he's going to be more involved. But there is an incumbent, really good running back in Melvin Gordon. That was t 2018. Melvin Gordon finished that season as the running back seven. He was great. Austin Eckler was the running back twenty four. He was more involved and very, very good. The following season after that is where it kind of flipped, and uh, Melvin Gordon finished at 23, Eckler at running back six. But it's like my comp, when I, when I watch Jalen Warren, he's been the first player I've ever seen that, like, he reminds me of Austin Eckler. He's that, sure. you know, what is he's like 5'8", 2, he's compact, 15. but real fast. Yeah, 5'8", yeah, 215 on the dot. Booyah, kasha. You memorized his weight and height. But, yeah, he's 24 years old. Um, the injury derailed his opportunity last year. But, uh, you know, we've seen DeAndre Swift be relevant with minimal touches in the past. And and if this offense can't get going, look, you you both have said look, the confidence in George Pickens. Is it really there? Yeah, I don't you know, know. Deontay Johnson, he's got a role, but he can't carry an entire offense. You're going to get explosive players onto the field. I think Warren will have a bigger opportunity than people think. And uh, he's, he's free. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a free, it's a free shot. And, and if he is involved as a scat back, he's someone that you could throw in a flex and have be someone that you start on certain weeks, and that's fine. He's not solely just an insurance option, but he is also an insurance option where if something happens to Najee, he's got a big workload on him, and and the, the, the situation thrusts Jalen Warren into a full starting role. This, this ain't no Benny Snell. Jalen Warren's good. All right. Who wants to go next? Well, you got to throw in a I shot. I mean, no, on, I liked on, it. On I liked Benny it. Snell there. I liked it because we're not going to get to talk about him <laughs> yeah. ever again. So you got to take your shot. <laughs> All right. Poor Benny. I'll bring up my next uh, he name. He was so enthusiastic. He's doing his best. Do you remember how enthusiastic Benny Snell was? Oh, he's a wonderful He's guy. a great interview. Wonderful smile. Loved his. Didn't he have the, the, the mouth Did guard the that whistle? was like the. Yeah, it was the like <laughs> the kazoo mouthpiece. <laughs> I think he did. I, I you believe lack he in should, yards per carry. He should have gotten rid of that. He was always out of breath. <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> but but, but the, the yeah, I think it was more whistle. But the idea of a kazoo <laughs> mouthpiece is 
Like every time you have the ball just running past someone, you're like, <laughs> like that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you'd probably end up running like Benny Snell with that. <laughs> um, all right. My sleeper candidate is going. To- I w- this was a surprise to me. Yeah. When I saw this pop in. I mean, I certainly like the pick. Yeah, this so is we're great. sharing a lot of love. This is on a this rare show. episode where we're agreeing a little too much. I uh, look. I don't know why well, you, you want a backup tight end two as a sleeper, but that's fine. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is not Adam Troutman from the Denver Broncos. It is tight end, starting tight end, starting tight end. Greg Dulcich. Yes, yes last year's starting tight end. We're all in agreement. <laughs> uh, Greg D. Greg D. Uh, he is. Personally, my favorite late round tight end this year. Um, really, yeah. I love this. Yeah, this is. You know, he was really good. I I am fully, always, and forever will be anti rookie tight end until the NFL changes a ton and a decade from now it's happened four or five times. Then I'll finally adapt because it oh, doesn't happen. So wait, you you can't have Dalton Kincaid singularly change no your way, opinion? No way. No way. Dalton Kincaid has a good season. The next season, I'm out on rookie tight ends. Dang it. Uh, it's going to have to happen a We're couple of times. We're never going to get that many in a row. <laughs> no, no, you're not because rookie tight ends, they, they have too much to learn. The position is not usually as simple and they're not as skilled as – a wide receiver when it comes to like route running and and those things they're, they're just not so it won't happen as a rookie but as a rookie you can see flashes of brilliance you know Kyle Pitts had a disappointing rookie season but he was awesome at the same time you know the talent was there well Greg Dulcich so- showed that he missed the first five weeks with a hamstring injury missed a lot of the offseason program he played 10 games and in six of those games he was a tight end one he finished, you know, the majority of his games with more than eight fantasy points, which is pretty darn good for a rookie. Uh, over the last decades, uh, decades, <laughs> singular decade, here are the rookie tight ends to average 40-plus receiving yards per game as little baby boys before turning 23. It's Kyle Pitts did it, and it's Greg Dulcich. That's it. That's the end of the list. Um, Russell Wilson targets tight ends. I mean, even when he doesn't have great ones, we made Big Montana a oh, thing. Well, Russ Wilson made Big Montana a thing. <laughs> yes, he did. Oh, oh, we got it. We, I mean, come on. I don't even know where the drop is anymore, it's, guys. It's hidden. It's hidden in the archives. Oh. There it is. <laughs> Big Montana. Will Disley. Who? Will Disley. That's right. <laughs> Russell Wilson took Will Disley and and made him pretty good. We can fade this now, guys. Yes. <laughs> I, I can't fade it over here. You got to do it. Um. Russell Wilson, in his time in Seattle, tight ends saw 22% of the targets. From week six on, the Greg Dulcich time, last year the Broncos tight ends were targeted 25% of the time. And now you have Sean Payton coming over. I don't know if you guys saw. Did you see the quotes on Sean Payton talking about Greg Dulcich? Oh, yeah. So he was specifically saying. I have a Google alert set up for Greg Dulcich. (laughs) He was specifically saying how fast he is and what great ball skills he has and that he sees him as his joker yes Uh, the joker role he says is not for a wide receiver it's usually a running back or a tight end someone that they specifically make for mismatches he named uh some running backs reggie bush alvin Kamara, uh that were used in that joker role in his system in his time in new orleans well that's what they're going to try to do with greg dulcich is Get him on the wrong guys because his speed and ball skills, he's a special talent there. And so I I think you saw enough flashes as a rookie. You've got the hope that Sean Payton fixes Russell Wilson. And even without that, with Russell Wilson having a bad year, he was okay as a as a rookie. So you've got athleticism. I, I was going to say, I don't want to bet on a, a breakout tight end that cannot make a big play. Exactly. I don't want to bet on like a short area, you know, maybe the Dennis Pitta type of style you want to see a, a a young tight end, even if they don't have a great rookie season, do what what Dulcich did: thirty eight yard reception, thirty nine yard reception, thirty yard reception, twenty three yard reception, or the way that um, you know you saw Julius Thomas years ago have a couple breakout plays in the preseason, or or Chig looking more athletic. Like Mark Andrews was like that, Kittle was like that. So yeah, and, and the thing is, if you draft, he's going to go undrafted in most leagues, most normal uh, home leagues. Obviously, if you're playing on underdog or something, we'll talk about some or later a Broncos tight ends right only now. league. He'll go. Um, he'll go. But if he if he fails, 
and he ends up just being the same as if you drafted Evan Ingram or if you drafted, uh, you know, Don Kincaid, which is far worse, um, or Cole Komet or whatever, it's not going to be disappointing. But he has the ability, I think, to break out into a new tier. Yeah, plus the mustache. Oh my gosh, he! I watched uh, an interview with him the short from like shorts. two days ago, and first of all, he's so softly spoken. He is like he was. He really had a nice, soothing voice, but it's surprising because I swear to you, that man shaved this morning everything but the mustache, and he almost had a beard. <laughs> that's a man. <laughs> I mean, straight up, so, that's a dude. So we got to get hair follicle growth speed like this, into the UDK? It does seem the like UDK. the speed you can grow hair is, is, per, cor- it, is corollary to, to probably your, your manness. Your, yes. Yeah, your ability For to sure. chop down trees. Yep. That's right. Use power tools. How often do, do you ups? shave? How often do you? Oh, well, that's a dumb question. <laughs> Al has a beard all the time. <laughs> um, he, But he shaves daily. All the way. Yeah. <laughs> all the way. Um, okay, Mike. I, I I regret to say this. Uh, I know what you're going to say. But I like it. Yeah, yeah like baby. It. Oh, no. Hey. I like it, and I know it's in our UDK. It, what's, what, what's fun about the the show so the, in the ultimate draft kit we have the sleepers breakouts and busts and for the most part we all three of us agree on those players if they're going to get in if, to, to the get UDK. in the UDK the, occasionally we'll have uh, a player where two thirds of us just feel so strongly that we kind of you're like well I'll, bully the other one yeah e- exactly like well I'll I'll relinquish what well, we can put them in there because you two feel so strong that this is going to happen. But well, this is a player that all three of us agree on. Even even Jason, with a very low ranking of this player, it's still it it's still above ADP, and it is Mr. Van Jefferson of the Los Angeles Rams wide receiver. And it's I mean I hate you, it, <laughs> but I like it. You you have to remember the whole story of the Rams and Van Jefferson to to understand where we're going with this. So so Matthew Stafford will be back. We're just one year removed from Matthew Stafford throwing 4,900 yards and 41 passing touchdowns with Sean McVay when he came in that first season. And last year, before the bye week and all the injuries started to happen, Matthew Stafford was still on a pace to throw for over 4,400 yards. So that was there. That season that I referred to with the 4,900 and 41, Van Jefferson was in his second year as a second-round rookie and – he was coming off a year of 50 receptions, 800 yards, and six touchdowns. Like that's a very solid season for a for a second year player to break out. And then last year it was Van Jefferson was very interesting. However, he tweaked his knee on August 1st. He had to have surgery, and it was a knee that he had already had uh, repaired. And so he ended up missing all of the preseason, missed a whole bunch of time coming into the season. He was supposed to be the wide receiver too behind Cooper Cup for the Rams, and it just it never worked out. Then you had Stafford get hurt, and everything just kind of fell apart. So it was really a lost season, not just for the team, but for Van Jefferson. He is a field stretcher. Once he was back to being a full-time player this past season, from week 13 on, that you can see it in the box score, his snaps finally jumped back up to the high percentile of this guy's on the field all the time. He was averaging... 18 yards per catch, and that's with John Wolford and Baker Mayfield as the quarterback. That's a dude who is absolutely getting it done. It is really rare to find an every-down wide receiver this late in the draft. We're talking on on underdog, the wide receiver 65, and sleeper just off the charts, not being drafted. And then looking at, at, at Matthew Stafford, he has supported multiple wide receivers for fantasy before. So in 10 full seasons from Stafford, six of them have a top 36. Uh, he has multiple top 36 wide receivers. Uh, we're not calling for Van Jefferson to be like the breakout. He's he's in the sleeper category. Yeah. Because I have him at 37. Andy right now currently at 39. For, for a player who's just – he's being drafted in the 60s, and he already had a season – of 806, like if he is truly the number two wide receiver with Cooper Cup taking all the attention, Cooper Cup's going to get his. Someone else on this team has to do something, and I think that it can be Van Jefferson. Yeah, I think I think that 
your point about him not being some kind of giant breakout is important. Uh, you know, Zay Jones mm-hmm. was startable last year. Could Van Jefferson be a, the spot starter this he could. year? Like, Van you Jefferson know? was the wide receiver 34 that year. So a guy who has already shown with this cor- with this quarterback, with this team, he could be a top 36 wide receiver, yeah. and he's being, he's being undrafted. Yeah, it, it, he's worth a shot because if you bet on McVay and Stafford to – you know, get it done and their defense to be worse, which look, they've been in positions where they did not have to score as often as they might have to score this year. Uh, you you kind of want to take some shots there. So, and that that's also a reason why, like even, uh, even Tyler Higby is yeah. probably needs to be in um, PPR. thought about a little bit. We'll in talk about oh, him in a second. <laughs> no, we won't. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. sure we will. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Well, we just got back from uh, a vacation, and so I am curious, as we enter the Best Ball Breakdown segment, if Jason's best ball drafts have slowed at all. Have you kept up the same pace as you have all offseason? Um, well, I, I was smart enough to stop a few days beforehand make sure all of my drafts were done so i had so still married i had got it i had none on uh my cruise i am in three right now now that i'm back from the cruise i'll ramping up work my way back up to 10 or 20 here soon (laughs) well every week um we touch on some uh, topics related to best ball in the off season and uh today we are going to i don't know if i want to read that as the topic but what? yeah, Kyle put in here. Shake those tight ends. We got oh, got to shake them up. You got to read whatever's put in there. Yep. Um, and 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 he put a peach emoji. Yeah. Well, well, that's, that's just end. that's too far. Oh me. That that's for a butt. This is a family that, show. I think he means that's a butt. <laughs> tight butts. <laughs> Kyle, you're gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we are looking at tight ends that are going past pick one hundred. That we are drafting in best ball. So if you missed out on an elite tight end early, which affords you maybe the ability to go two tight end in a best ball league, um, you're probably going to end up with a three tight end build. Which and, which was successful. Three tight end builds have uh, had the highest playoff advance rate compared to two or four last year. There you go. So we we have plenty of names really that you can see. Look, they're not gonna they're not gonna finish in the top five. They're not gonna give you Mark Andrews season. Um, but they could surprise, and really, if you combine two or three of these guys, you're going to be in good shape. Yeah, I. Th- this is my preference. Like my ideal, if I have the to, to shake those tight ends to shake that's your preference, shake those peaches. Shake it. Um, my my ideal roster construction is getting three late tight ends, and the reason why for me on underdog is when you look at the ADPs above 150, you look at the guys that are going late. There are plenty of tight ends that will make an impact. They'll get a touchdown this week, and then three weeks later, and then two weeks later, they'll finish the season with seven or eight touchdowns. They'll have some big games. If you get three of those and you mix them together and it automatically picks whichever one has the best week, you can do a lot with that. Whereas in that same range, you're not finding a lot of wide receivers and running backs that are going to make an impact. So I'd rather get my running backs and wide receivers early and grab three of these late guys. So we've got a handful of guys that we are targeting that you can target. Yeah, and and, and the first name, Chigo Conquo, we've brought him up a lot, but it applies here in best ball. He's going to be available to you. He is a tight end for the Tennessee Titans, if you're yes. unaware. Yeah. And, okay. and this is a roster that, while they have been rumored to be connected – with the Andre Hopkins right now has Traylon Burks in the passing game and no one else. He's Oconquo is so wild to me. He is the tight end 12 on underdog, which is okay. That's respectable, but it's like, it's not just us. <laughs> like we're not, we are not on an Island here with liking Oconquo as a late round tight end. And despite all the love for him, like from like on draft Twitter and things like that, he still goes really late. He is an example of what we talked about with Dulcich earlier, where if you watch him make a handful of plays, you're like, oh, well, he's a he's an NFL tight end, and he's going to be here a while. But I brought his name up a lot, so I, I will just kind of talk about David and Joku because I think he has a huge opportunity with Deshaun Watson 
It is a bet on that offense fixing itself. The majority of Watson's career, he's been a dominant fantasy force. The end of last year, the schedule, the hiatus, him not playing for a while, the pressure. I don't know what got into those handful of games that made it look as ugly as it did. I am not believing that that's the future uh, or, or at a minimum, the regular performance you're going to get from him. So Njoku is so talented and so athletic and there's so many opportunities in this passing game that, you know, to me, those two names outside the top 180 P uh, are interesting to me. Yeah, I, I obviously talked a lot about Greg Dulcich, so he applies here. He's going at 140 right, right. now. So um, Much lower than both those two guys I brought up. Yeah, so I'm I'm a big fan of that. And if you want to go even lower, and I do, Tyler Higby is going to be... got to shake him out. He, 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 to me, is one of those guys where you want two... If you're going with the three tight end build, you want two big explosive guys, and you want one guy with a baseline. And Higby is your baseline guy. He will... You know, make sure you don't end up with a goose any week. He was over a hundred targets uh, last year. The problem is he scored no touchdowns, and that was because Matthew Stafford wasn't there to throw touchdowns. The year you were just talking about with Van Jefferson, where he was the number two target and was really good for fantasy. Well, guess what? It was like four targets behind him was Tyler Higby. They lost Allen Robinson. And so, no, I, I don't mean, think they lost him. No, they gained. They gained <laughs> not having Allen Robinson. And you know, H Higby will I be. Say they lost him. <laughs> Higby will just be a volume play that is going so late and left for dead that I uh, I like him. Honestly, he he is very similar to the way I look at Dalton Schultz, which is mm -hmm. you don't want to draft either guy, and you probably are dumb if you don't because they're going to be parts of the they're going to be focal points of these offenses. Yeah, high but, volume targets. Give me Matthew Stafford as I a haven't quarterback. Even heard Dalton Schultz's name brought up. But yeah. this was a free agent tight end that has performed at the NFL level who will get plenty of targets yeah. in Houston. Uh, he, he is like uh, Austin Hooper to me. To me, he, oh, no. you, you, you yeah. know who he reminds me of? He reminds me of Tyler Higby last year where you didn't have a quarterback that could throw touchdowns. And I, I, I think with the rookie quarterback in tow, he'll have a lot of volume. And this is half PPR. If it was full PPR, I'd be a little bit more in on Dalton Schultz, but I don't expect him to score much. Mike, you've written your – name in the smallest font available to our our show doc it is do you want to whisper say it it's it's Taysom Hill yes. that again? say it louder no <laughs> it's, it's, it's he it's, said Taysom Hill it's Taysom Hill who is going as the tight end 21 uh oh in best ball too I that mean, how that is that is the only is like, that? I will never do this because I am a man who has uh integrity a, yes a, a strong moral foundation that is just opposed to Taysom Hill being on my teams. But for <laughs> to go as the tight end 21 is just absolute nonsense. All remarks coming out of New Orleans are Taysom Hill will be in the same role that he was in last year, which if you're playing him in season long, you take the chance that you are going to you get, get a, the wrong You're week. going to get a zero from your, the tight end position, which is brutal. But in a best ball, when you don't have to pick – when Taysom Hill is going to have the two rushing touchdowns on two touches for the entirety of the game, but that's that's bonanza points for for your best ball team. So him going that late to me, and I, I'm anti Taysom Hill. So uh, I don't I don't understand what the draft community is doing. He, I I don't either, and I'm part of it. I mean, I don't have much Taysom Hill, and I I'm writing down like <laughs> draft Taysom Hill. He's going 171, like. Why is he there? I don't. It's a great know. pick, and I'm going to be drafting some Taysom Hill. I think maybe it's because Derek Carr. Like you're thinking, yeah, oh, be. maybe he'll be less involved, but that's dumb. This is, he will be just as involved as he always is. He didn't do his work through the air. It was getting carries, and the starting running back for the New Orleans Saints is probably going to be suspended for six games. Kendra Cole? Miller's getting suspended. No. You no, we, how dare you? I mean, we goal, love goal line Miller. opportunities. He succeeded it, there. The, it's it's going to what he did last year is probably going to happen again. At least maybe not as great of uh, five hundred seventy five and seven on the ground, but even if if you get five hundred and five on the ground for a player who's the tight end twenty one, you should be drafting that player. All right, that was Best Ball Breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to $100 using the code BALLERS. Oh, we did it.
We yeah, did we, it. We made some it. Some breakouts, some sleepers. I think next show we're going to have a lot more disagreement. Yeah, what do we got? We got values and busts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Maybe get into little fisticuffs. Yeah, we might. So definitely check out the Dynasty podcast. Released a brand new episode yesterday. If you need a little bit more fantasy footballers, check that out. Until next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.